In this video I'm going to present some ideas about uh, simulating an Intel 8080 CPU. First we'll uh, take a look at uh, some uh, characteristics of the processor and uh, then we'll see uh, how uh, to implement uh, simulation in uh, Java. In uh, previous videos I uh, talked about uh, simulating other CPUs such as uh, Intel uh, 4 uh, 004, uh, 4040, 8008. So uh, I suggest you should also watch those videos uh, as more ideas uh, are presented there. Also in previous videos I uh, created two parts, uh, one dedicated to the CPU itself and the second part dedicated to uh, Java implementation. In this video I'll try to keep them uh, both together. So right after uh, the history and the main characteristics uh, we'll see uh, how to actually implement the simulation in uh, Java. However I suggest you keep watching uh, because uh, the main characteristics of the CPU are uh, important to understand why uh, certain decisions uh, were taken to implement uh, the simulation. So let's get started with a brief history. Uh, so this uh, 8080 CPU was introduced in uh, 1974. It uh, follows uh, in a list of uh, processors. So we had the 4004, in 1971, uh, we had uh, 8008 in 1972. So now in 1974, uh, we have uh, the 8080. Uh, interesting, uh, also in 1974, we had the 4040 uh, CPU. So this uh, CPU was designed and uh, manufactured by Intel. Uh, however, the next year in 1975, uh, AMD produced the AM9080, uh, which uh, apparently was a reverse engineer clone of the Intel 8080. Uh, Intel uh, 8080 was uh, supposed to work at uh, different frequencies between uh, 2 MHz and uh, 3.125 MHz. It has an 8-bit uh, uh, data bus and uh, a 16-bit uh, address bus. And uh, compared to previous uh, CPUs, this is a dedicated 16-bit address bus, uh, which is separated uh, from the data bus. Uh, we had a mix of 8-bit uh, or 16-bit uh, data that uh, can be transferred, uh, obviously having an 8-bit data bus. This meant uh, we needed uh, actually two bus uh, transfers to get 16-bit data values. Uh, and uh, we have instructions that uh, may work with 8-bit uh, registers. The registers themselves are 8-bit. Uh, but uh, it was possible, uh, for example, to load a 16-bit register pair. So we have here a notion of register pairs, uh, which is something that uh, we have also in later architectures such as the 8086. Uh, I've included here some uh, links, uh, especially to the 8080 data sheet, uh, but also the Wikipedia article. As usually you'll find these uh, links uh, below the video in the description. So this is how uh, the 8080 package looks like. Uh, as I already mentioned, it has this 8-bit data bus. We see here the D0 through D7 pins. It has a 16-bit address bus, which is separated from the data bus. We see here the pins from uh, A0 to A15. And uh, having this 16-bit address bus means it can access uh, 64 kilobytes of memory. In addition, it has an uh, interrupt signal. Uh, it has a hold signal, which uh, is used for uh, 
signaling uh, to the CPU that uh, there is a direct memory access operation uh, performed by other devices. Uh, it allows accessing 256 uh, I.O. ports and uh, in the datasheet we see listed uh, 78 instruction keywords. Uh, however, uh, these include also the NOP or uh, no operation. Uh, which can be argued that maybe it's not a real instruction, but uh, anyway, this keyword exists. So obviously, I suggest you take a look at the 8080 data sheet. So the data sheet uh, looks like this. It's a PDF document with uh, technical details uh, related to the CPU. I've already uh, discussed uh, some of these uh, technical details that you can see here but it's uh, very important prior to implementing uh, simulation uh, to really uh, get a good understanding of uh, the internal structure of the CPU and uh, what uh, exactly is uh, happening uh, while the CPU executes a program so maybe certain characteristics from the data sheet like uh, operating temperatures and so on and voltages uh, these are not important in, uh, these are not uh, important for the simulation but uh, other uh, characteristics uh, such as uh, the signals the instruction set uh, the registers and so on uh, everything uh, is uh, very important and uh, you really should uh, familiarize yourself with uh, this information uh, prior to starting a simulation project. So let's look a bit more at the internal architecture of the 8080. It has uh, six 8-bit registers. Uh, you can see them uh, here on the right side. Uh, registers B, C, D, E, H, and L. Uh, remember from earlier I said in uh, some instructions these can be accessed as register pairs uh, B, C, D, E, and H, L. Uh, so this allows for certain 16-bit uh, operations. It also has uh, two 16-bit uh, registers, the stack pointer and the program counter. Uh, and why these are 16-bit? Uh, because they actually hold addresses. The stack pointer uh, holds an address on the stack. The program counter holds an address for the current instruction. So uh, since addresses are 16-bits, uh, this is why these two registers are also 16 bits. Uh, it has an 8 bit accumulator, uh, five flags, and uh, instructions which uh, may have uh, one byte, two bytes, or three bytes. Uh, this is uh, uh, an extract from the data sheet. So it's, uh, it shows here. Uh, one byte instructions contain an opcode. Uh, this is the actual instruction to be executed. Two byte instructions uh, contain an opcode in the first byte and then an operand. Uh, we have here examples like uh, immediate mode or IO instructions. Uh, three byte instructions uh, contain an opcode again in the first byte. And then uh, either an address or uh, operand 1 uh, and operand 2. Uh, so in all three cases, uh, the first byte uh, contains an opcode. So this uh, is used to identify the instruction type. So when implementing a simulation, uh, you need to read a byte from uh, the address identified by the program counter. This would be the instruction opcode. Uh, based on this opcode, you need to identify uh, the instruction and then possibly uh, read uh, additional uh, one or two bytes uh, that are part of the current instruction. 
So let's see a typical uh, implementation of the simulation, first the algorithm. Uh, so we start by reading uh, the instruction at program counter address. Then we need to decode the instruction. Uh, so this uh, instruction decoding means that based on the opcode, which is in the first byte, we need to identify uh, the actual instruction to be executed. Then uh, we may need to perform additional memory accesses. Uh, for example, if uh, the instruction uh, uses the stack, uh, we need to access the memory uh, at the location uh, identified by the stack pointer. Uh, we may also need to update uh, registers. For example, if we have an arithmetic operation or uh, if we load something into a register we need to update it and uh, certain instructions not all of them but certain instructions uh, will require updating the CPU flags uh, these indicate uh, states that uh, are encountered especially during uh, mathematical operations like for example uh, <coughs> the result is uh, zero or not zero uh, if uh, we have a positive or a negative number and so on. And finally, after uh, executing the instruction, we need to advance the program counter. Uh, this means incrementing the program counter by the number of bytes uh, in the instruction, uh, which can be one, two or three. Or uh, in special cases like uh, jump instructions or uh, procedure calls and so on, uh, the program counter would uh, receive an entirely different address. So if uh, we were to implement this algorithm uh, in a programming language, uh, something like uh, Java, for example, uh, we will uh, have something like this. So we start by uh, reading from memory at uh, program counter address. This would uh, return the instruction. Uh, actually, it's the first byte of the instruction. Uh, we'll have a switch based on this uh, opcode. Uh, and for example, we have case uh, 1, so 0x01 is the hexadecimal representation, which in this case is 1. And this is actually LXIB. Uh, now we can uh, look in the data sheet and uh, we see here uh, we have 00000001. So this is the opcode. It corresponds to LXIB, which stands for Load Immediate Register Pair uh, B and C. So, as I said earlier, you really need to look at the data sheet, and uh, while implementing the simulation, you need to look here for the opcodes. Uh, so, uh, we need to perform again a memory read at uh, program counter plus one because at program counter we had the instruction opcode, which we already uh, read. So, at program counter plus one we have the immediate value, which will be stored in the register pair BC. And uh, that's all uh, for this uh, instruction then we need to increment the program counter with the number of bytes, in this case, three bytes. Uh, obviously, this number of bytes uh, probably needs to be uh, set here. Uh, actually, this is one way of implementing it. Uh, it's also possible that uh, each time you perform a memory read, uh, you also increment the program counter as needed. So in this case, uh, after uh, reading the instruction memory read uh, program counter, you also increment the program counter by one. Uh, well, here uh, BC 
uh, equals memory read, uh, then you would not need to specify pro encounter plus one because it would be already incremented. Uh, and here you would increment it by two. So in this case, uh, you don't need this last instruction as the program counter is already incremented. Also, you need to consider how uh, you actually store the registers uh, because uh, you can access either individually register B and register C or as a pair uh, like in this example. So if you store the registers as pairs, then okay, this works here, BC equals memory read. Uh, otherwise, if you store individually B and C, uh, you will probably need to perform a memory read for register B and another memory read for register C. So this is an idea of how to implement uh, this uh, simulation code and uh, we will look in detail at uh, the implementation from the Java System Simulator project. But uh, before we move on to that, uh, let's see again in the data sheet. Uh, there are uh, some instructions like, for example, this uh, move instruction, where uh, the actual uh, instruction contains uh, two bits, uh, the most significant two bits, which are uh, zero, 01 in positions uh, 6 and 7. And uh, then we have a register specification for the destination register and another register specification for the source register. And uh, the operation is move uh, from one register to another register. Actually, uh, for those uh, less familiar with assembly language, it's actually not an actual move, it's rather a copy uh, from one register to the other register. But the instruction is called uh, move. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can either generate uh, all the opcodes here and uh, place them in a switch statement, or uh, you can check only this first part here uh, by zeroing the rest of the instruction. So you can check this value here and uh, then extract from the instruction opcode uh, the identification of uh, the registers. And uh, that's why you really need uh, to pay uh, close attention to this uh, data sheet. And we also have here the encoding of uh, the registers. Uh, for example, uh, register B uh, would be 000, zero, zero. register C would be 0, zero, 001, and so on. And it's also possible to have uh, memory or uh, the accumulator. Okay, um, so um, I guess uh, these are the main ideas, and uh, now we should uh, look at the code. This is the actual code uh, from the Java System Simulator project. You can uh, find it on uh, my GitHub. Again, the link uh, will be below the video in the description. So uh, what uh, we do here, uh, we start by uh, declaring the internal uh, variables. Uh, for example, the program counter, the stack pointer, an array for uh, the registers. I'm actually uh, keeping uh, individual registers here. Uh, so we have uh, an array of six registers. Uh, you can see it here, the correspondence. Uh, we have register B uh, as register zero. Uh, and so on until uh, register L, which uh, is registers uh, 5. Uh, we also have the flags and uh, some additional uh, variables that uh, will be used uh, throughout the simulation. Um, for example, here I'm uh, computing a parity map, which uh, will
will be used to properly set up the parity flag, but you may also try to compute it uh, on the fly. I'm keeping it uh, pre-computed here to speed up the process. Uh, very important for uh, every simulation, uh, you need to understand how the device starts. I have here an initialize method which initializes the CPU. Uh, in this case, uh, all the registers are set to zero. However, the flags uh, in a real CPU is set uh, to this uh, value, zero, two. Uh, I also have here some methods for interfacing with uh, other components. And uh, here, uh, I have a description of the flags, so um, <coughs> we have uh, the sign, uh, the zero indicator, uh, an auxiliary carry, which is uh, a carry uh, from uh, uh, bit uh, 3 to bit uh, 4 uh, in the notation starting from zero, so actually from the fourth bit to the fifth bit. Uh, parity indicator, a uh, regular carry flag, and uh, these uh, values uh, which do not hold uh, information uh, are actually set to 0, 0 and 1. And this is why uh, the flags uh, are initialized with uh, this value 2, which corresponds to this one here. Uh, why this happens? Well, because that's how it was implemented in hardware. Uh, then uh, we have the actual uh, implementation. Uh, of course, this, uh, there is some code here for checking an uh, interrupt or if the CPU is halted. But uh, basically, you see uh, what I mentioned uh, the slides earlier, so I'm reading the opcode byte 1. I'm also incrementing the program counter. Uh, then I have a switch based on uh, opcode byte 1 and uh, a series of uh, cases for different values. I've opted for um, uh, generating all the possible uh, opcodes here. Uh, this is uh, not entirely generated by hand, we'll see soon how this is generated, but uh, the code uh, does exactly this. Uh, we have a case for each opcode value, uh, and for example, uh, case 0x01, which we know uh, corresponds to the LXI instruction, as we saw earlier. And we have a function that, uh, ho uh, that uh, takes care of this opcode. So if we look at this function, it's uh, LXIB. And uh, what it does is uh, reads uh, from the program counter uh, the next value and uh, also uh, make sure this is uh, one byte that was read. And uh, as I mentioned, the registers B and C are stored uh, in uh, separate locations. So we have here uh, register uh, 1, which is uh, register C. This is read first. And then uh, register B, which is register 0, is read next. Uh, apart from the memory bus read operation, uh, we also have a special case, in uh, the case we have uh, an interrupt. In this case, uh, an interrupt instruction is forced uh, onto the data bus. Uh, again, in a real system, this happens in hardware. Uh, so in this case, I'm uh, using a control bus uh, implementation. Uh, I have a video about this control bus, uh, which allows uh, the software to send uh, an instruction. So this is the second part of the instruction here. If we have an interrupt, then uh, we read uh, from the data placed on the control bus. But uh, in uh, 
more situation uh, we'll be reading uh, from the memory bus uh, exactly as you saw uh, in the presentation and uh, in some other cases like uh, we see here opcode 03 uh, which uh, is an increment uh, we have uh, computation and um, this is uh, then stored in the register. Uh, we also have, for example, here another uh, increment. Uh, again, we have a computation here and we have a flag uh, update. But as I said, this is uh, actually not entirely written by hand. So let's take a look of how this is uh, actually uh, generated. So, as you saw, uh, the instructions have an, usually an internal structure. Uh, so, I decided to write a small utility, which uh, I call the CPU spec compiler, which uh, allows me to define the instruction as it is in the datasheet and uh, implement a uh, very short uh, code uh, for its execution. And then I run this uh, CPU spec compiler, uh, which uh, will read this uh, spec specification file and will uh, produce that uh, switch case structure that uh, you saw. So, for example, again, taking a look at uh, LXI B, uh, this is the opcode here, uh, as you saw in the data sheet. Um, so again, let's uh, take a look here. So we have this uh, LXI B. Uh, this is the exact opcode, and what it does is it uh, sets uh, register C uh, by reading the next byte and sets register B by reading the next byte. And uh, from this uh, specification, it uh, actually uh, generates the Java code uh, that you saw. Uh, okay, this is a very simple example, but now let's take a look at uh, move instruction. Uh, again, as uh, you saw in the data sheet here, it has this internal structure 0, 1, then uh, destination register, then source register. So uh, I'm uh, writing it exactly like this, 0, 01 destination source. Uh, and uh, what I have is a set uh, destination register get uh, source register. And uh, this does uh, everything. Uh, and uh, these uh, instructions here, for those familiar with uh, C or C++, uh, maybe you recognize this uh, uh, macro. Uh, Java natively does not support macros, but uh, with this CPU spec compiler, I've also implemented uh, macro uh, preprocessing. So uh, these are uh, implemented here as macros. So, uh, for example, get uh, B uh, returns registers uh, of zero. Uh, get BC, this would be a register pair, uh, uses this uh, formula here to concatenate the two values and create a number corresponding to the register pair BC. Uh, also, uh, getting something from uh, memory uh, or um, uh, loading the uh, loading from uh, a specified address. Also for the flags, uh, there are macros to set uh, different uh, flags here and uh, finally the corresponding mappings uh, between uh, destination register uh, and uh, the value uh, specified. And again, this is uh, exactly what uh, you saw in the data sheet. Okay, so these uh, values from here from, uh, for uh, DDD or SSS 
uh, are actually uh, placed here. So uh, with this uh, small utility that I wrote, it's uh, quite easy to <coughs> start with a data sheet and uh, implement uh, the CPU simulation. And then uh, by running the utility, you get a regular uh, Java code. Uh, it's possible that uh, this utility may be used to produce code in other languages as well because it simply replaces uh, those macros with whatever you wrote there. So uh, if you write code for some other language, uh, obviously it will produce code in that language. But currently for the Java System Simulator project, I was interested only in uh, Java language. So. Uh, it produces that switch case structure which uh, decodes uh, the opcodes and replaces uh, these uh, uh, easy representations here with uh, the corresponding code uh, written in the macros. One last thing, uh, in the CPU datasheet uh, there is no mention of uh, how uh, the instructions are actually performing the operation uh, and there is no mention of uh, what flags are being uh, affected by each instruction. So uh, <coughs> you will need probably to consult also something like the Intel 8080 assembly language programming manual that uh, you see here and uh, if we look uh, for example, at uh, this uh, page here, uh, I will zoom it. Uh, you see here the description for the uh, aura uh, instruction. This uh, performs a logical or uh, of a register or memory with uh, the accumulator. So uh, this uh, would be the fixed part of the opcode and we have the operand here uh, specified as you saw earlier as uh, three bits indicating uh, which register uh, is being used. And uh, if we look here on the second column, uh, we see a description the specified by the logically or bit by bit with the contents of the accumulator. The carry bit is reset to zero. So after this uh, particular operation, the carry bit will always be zero. Uh, the logical OR function of two bits equals zero if and only if both the bits equal zero and so on. I previously created a video about uh, binary operations. So if you are not familiar with these, uh, please take a look at those videos. And finally, it says uh, condition bits affected uh, carry zero sign and parity. And we also have an example here. So uh, for each instruction, you need to be sure you understand uh, properly what uh, is involved, uh, what operations are executed and what uh, condition bits uh, or flags uh, are uh, affected by the operation. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usually, you will find links uh, below in the description. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.